how to find derivative. Theorem tells us that actually there's a shortcut to find a derivative of the inverse function. Theorem says, if f is one to one, that means it has inverse function, and is, and has a derivative, has a derivative means a differentiable, and differentiable. If f is one to one and differentiable means has a derivative with the inverse, with inverse f minus one, then f inverse differentiable as well, differentiable as well. And that's good because derivative as I trying to keep pointing out all the time means how fast something is changing, how fast the progress is going. Derivative also predicts future and, and shows you the past. So we don't have to wait for millions of years to see how far the Mars is. We can calculate the distance and the speed of its movement during derivatives, looking into the future or looking to the past to see what happened with dinosaurs and so on. So it would be nice if I solved the inverse problem, if I solved why there is in Sedona, there is a crater uh, after the volcano, right? You know that there was like used to be a volcano there and it erupted, blah, blah, blah. How do we know all of this? We solve the inverse problem. That's why archaeology actually uses mathematics in, and some equations there to solve inverse problems. So we solved it. And now I want to know how fast the eruption happened. It would be nice to do it without finding the inverse function because sometimes it's very hard to find the inverse function. Can I find how fast, how fast the inverse function is without finding the inverse function? Kind of the, with, the, without finding the derivative of the original, of, mm, without finding the derivative of the original function. The formula is, I will write, yeah? This is, so negative one and then prime derivative. Mm -hmm. Yes, they yeah, asked me definitely. So, it's like this. Uh, it's differentiable as well and how to find it. And the formula is the derivative of the v inverse function at A is 1 over the derivative at, find it at, take another color if you have or a pencil, that will be easier to see in the future inverse at a inverse at a of course if denominator is not zero then or it doesn't make sense even to start if this is not zero and this is the formula you'll have to remember it it's probably going to go to the test and you will have a lot of homework problems for that <coughs> so Example, exactly the last five minutes to do the example on this. And you'll see what I mean. Why it's actually a convenient way to find a derivative. 2x plus cosine x. The thing is, just like I told you, finding the inverse function is complicated. Uh, most of the time. Most of the time it's not just minus 2 and then take us cube root. Most of the time there's going to be, how would you find inverse function for this? 2x plus cosine. There is an arc cosine involved in division by 2. How would you do it in the same time? So for this one, we can't, we can't find f minus 1 directly. But we can, but using the theorem, we can find the derivative. Oh, that's not prime. Uh, that's inverse. Be careful here, that's inverse. Let me put a red color. We can't find inverse directly, but using the theorem, we can find the derivative of this unknown function using the formula. And this is how it looks like. Step one. What you do here is you use a theorem 
and you are saying, okay, we were looking at, oh, the question is, find the derivative of the inverse function at one. Okay, find this. The derivative of the inverse function at one. So that is what we're going to say. Looking for a derivative, uh, looking for the inverse function without a derivative at one means looking for some kind of b. We're going to call it b. Why do we need this? Because it's over here in the formula. Inverse function, inverse function at the given point. But we don't have inverse function. Can we avoid the step finding inverse function and plugging a in it? Yes, we can. Inverse function at 1 equals b means, that means by the definition, definition, which we introduced today, f of b is 1. Make sense? So inverse of 1 equals b means f of b equals 1. We're just exchanging, we're just exchanging these two guys, 1 and b, and renaming the function inverse versus the original. Then let's plug b into the function we have. What function we're talking about? We're talking about 2x plus cosine x. Step 2. Plug b everywhere you see x. 2 times b plus cosine b. And we know the result. It's 1. That's exactly what I'm talking about. What if you know the result and you're looking for the input? This is exactly the inverse problem. I know the answer is 1. But I don't know the input, that's why I call it B. You can call it, you don't want to call it Y or X because those are already taken. You can call it T, M, whatever you like. Just B is convenient. B, cosine of B plus 2B equals 1. Well, you need to solve this somehow. And step 2, uh, step 3 in this case, let's do it this way. Let's find the derivative of this. The derivative of x in general is 2 minus sine x. So those two things are coming from the original function. Those two things are coming from the original function. I'll put it from this orange part over here. That's what we know. Finally, I can plug things here this way. 4 f inverse prime by the definition is 1 over f prime so 1 over let's see the formula f prime at f minus 1 of a f minus 1 of 1 well when this number 2 equation holds Cosine of what gives you 1? Cosine of 0 gives you 1. 0 times 2 is 0, so actually it will work. If I have 0 plus 1 equals 1, it works. So b is 0, and this is how I'm going to use it. Sometimes, if you have the result, but you don't have the input, you can guess. Or, if a, you can make a good guess. Or b, it makes sense to just list possible solutions, and in this case, b equals 0 works. So this thing inside actually is 0. We're almost done. Just a second. Then it becomes 1 over f prime at 0. f prime comes from the number 3. That means I will have 2 minus sine of 0. And that we can calculate. That is 1 half. And this is the result. Super confusing. I know right now you just completely lost, which is usually the case for the example for the inverse derivative. What we did is, without finding the inverse of the original function, we found the speed of the derivative of the inverse. How fast my inverse is? One half fast. Positive means the inverse is increasing without knowing what inverse is. Practice these steps at home and you will get better at this. Couple examples should make you good.